I'm from South Korea. And then today, this morning, I'm going to talk about investment in uh, this amazing place. Um, thank you for having me, by the way. Um, all right. So first, <coughs> let me introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I'm a visual artist. My work has been shown um, in nationally across the country and then sometimes internationally. Currently, I have a solo exhibition at El Museo on Allen Street. Um, if you haven't checked it, uh, the show will be up until February 29th. And then tomorrow, I'm going to have a potato printing workshop. It's a free from 2 to 4. If you want to come in, just feel free to come. And then, um, yeah. And then um, next thing, I'm an art educator. I've been teaching um, printmaking, design, uh, digital media at um, University of Buffalo, Villa Maria College, um, Western New York Book Art Center, Squeaky Wheel. Currently, I'm a visiting professor at um, University of Rochester. Uh, I recently moved to there, but I still come here. <laughs> and then, uh, next thing, I'm a co-founder of Mirabel Press. It's a fine art printmaking press. We're next to Hyatt's. Um, so if you go to Hyatt's and if you see like green door, that's us. <laughs> uh, mostly I work with artists. Um, artists are like national, international, and then local artists. Um, it's more like a collaborated process than uh, just individually working, you know, to them. So yeah, that's who I am. So. Um, if you came for this talk, just imagine like investing money, you came wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at investing in money, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, but I'm really good at investing in time and my efforts. Um, that's where I am, like who I am right now, and then that's why I'm here. So that's what I'm talking about, what, what I'm going to talk about. So. Um, first thing I want to talk about, invest in creating. Um, because I'm an artist, I always have to create something. But since I was young, um, my mom is a painter. So I always start like a paint and then draw with my mom. And when I was young, I didn't know why I'm doing it because probably sometimes my mom forced me to do it. Or, you know, to she also told me I really hated studying. And then, but painting wasn't something that I never stopped doing it. So I just do it because it's so fun. And later, I told my mom, I want to go to art school. And it's funny, she said no. <laughs> I think it was her strategy. So if she says no, I will, you know, do hard, like I will try harder and harder. But um, that's not me, by the way. It's just the kind of picture. That's literally what I did when I was young. But um, it's not me. Anyway, so I went to art school. Um, I'm not trying to condescending this, but um, I went to the biggest art school because my mom told me, if you go to that school, I will let you go to art school. <laughs> so um, I went to there. And then at that time, I, I, my major was printmaking. And I didn't know why I chose it at that time, but I knew I liked printmaking. And then I studied while I was there. And then I graduated. It was so fun. And then later, I decided to go to graduate school. And the whole thing, it's like through, since I was young, I didn't know I was investing in my, like what I'm currently doing. But I was doing because it was so fun, you know? Like I liked printmaking when I was undergraduate. After I graduated, I worked at printmaking press in Korea for two years. And then I wanted to study more, and I wanted to improve myself as an artist. So I went to University of Buffalo, and that's a huge investment in my life. Like, of course, it cost money because I came from other country. And then going to graduate school, like, you kind of don't have a job for two years, and then you kind of dedicate your time for the school. Um, so that, that's how I feel like it's, it was my investment in my life, you know? So, and next thing I want to talk about invest in teaching because most of the job I'm doing currently is uh, teaching. Um, I knew I loved teaching since I was young. Like I was like, I love teaching like, and then I love sharing information with other people. So uh, back to my childhood. In Korea, since we're elementary school, we study English, mostly grammar, um, reading. So if you go to Korea, 
most of Korean will understand what you're saying, but they will not be able to speak. <laughs> it's funny. Um, so when I was uh, young, I studied English. Of course, it's part of the education. But also, I liked speaking English. It sounds like amazing, you know, like a, like a tongue rolling sound. We don't have that in Korea, of course. And the funny thing, when I was in undergraduate, um, one of my English courses, the professor taught me, um, taught the course with the Big Bang Theory. And that's how I know, how I know that's a TV show. Like we literally like memorize the script of the Big Bang Theory. And then like one day we have a test and I have a, I think my, my character was a Penny. And then I have to tell everything what Penny say in the episode. It was so <laughs> hilarious. Like at that time I didn't know, right? But now I, I feel like it's funny. And then um, during my undergraduate, I had a this great chance to go to Australia. I lived there for a year. And then when I was there, I realized that like, if I don't speak English, I cannot learn their culture and I cannot communicate with anyone over there, right? So I studied English really hard at that time. And then like, again, I didn't know what I'm gonna do at that time. Like this English studying, it's really helpful for what I'm doing right now. Like I have to speak all day to my students, to other people, to my clients. But um, if I didn't study English since I was young, probably I wouldn't be able to do this right now. So uh, next thing, um, I went to UB with a TA scholarship um, because when I decided to go to graduate school in abroad, I needed money um, without any you know, support, I couldn't go. So I only applied for the school, it, get, it gives me money. So UB was the best offer, <laughs> like it, it offered me the best deal. So I decided to come here. And then this like TA scholarship, like of course you are in the program, but also you are teaching at the same time it's a huge amount of the invest in your time and also effort. Like especially me coming from other country, I didn't know a lot of printmaking terms in English because most of what I say must like could be wrong or different names, you know. Um, so I learned a lot while I'm doing this, like finishing this TA scholarship. Um, and then um, I did a lot of workshop um, in the Buffalo and also other places as well. One of the places I'm gonna talk about more later, it's a Southern Graphic Council. It's a printmaking um, community. They hold a printmaking conference every year in a different location. Um, when I went to there first time, I really loved the like, uh, community aspects over there. So the next year, the following year, I decided to apply workshop because first I love sharing techniques and then um, also I kind of wanted to be involved one of like a, you know be involved this community so I did uh, some workshop there and then I uh, also did some workshop at squeaky wheel and uh, which is a great because mostly the student I had is like college student but it's squeaky wheel I mostly work with the young children you know young students um, I learned a lot from them actually I learned a lot from their culture <laughs> And then um, I want to highlight Western New York Book Art Center a lot because um, when I was in, under, um, in graduate school, one time after the first year, I think during the first year in the summer break, I wasn't sure what I'm going to do because I didn't have money to go back to Korea. Like I couldn't buy the flight. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And then I decided to volunteer at Winnipeg um, before I knew about this place, but um, not really much, you know. Again, like I really wanted to be involved in this community where I am, so I decided to volunteer there. And then I learned a lot from Winnipeg, and then later they gave me this great opportunity, like they hired me as a part-time job. Um, I will talk about that more, but um, it's, it's kind of like, I did it not for anything like, you know, I, I didn't expect it's coming back from me, like to me later, but at that time I was, I wanted to do something and then I wanted to be involved in this community and I did it. And later they gave me back with a, a greater thing, you know? So um, 
now I want to talk about investing in people because that's what Winnipeg did it to me. Like they invested in me um, because probably I've invested my time as a volunteer or in like a, you know someone who just donated my time for them. But um, there are a lot of people help me. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about investing in myself um, because as an artist, I like have to like spend time to make my artwork, you know? Like I'm, I'm expressing my ideas and thoughts in visual art, you know? Not speaking text where or com like a, you know, conversation. I try to speak through the, my work. So I have to spend a lot of time to make that happen. And also uh, because part of my job, I print other people's work. So I have to be good at what I'm doing. So I still practice printing. I still like explore other techniques if I find. Um, so after all this like investment in myself, now I have these resources, skills, and then experiences that I can invest in my students. Um, my teaching career is only like now probably four and five years so far, but like. I had this student, I taught him when he was a freshman, and after he graduated, he came to me, like, he learned so many things of, from me, like, by taking my courses, and then now he wanted to study more in printmaking, now he's applying for graduate school, you know. That kind of thing, like, it, it makes me so, like, proud of them, like, and then what I've been investing myself it helped me, you know. It's like it makes me move forward because I can invest those sources in this great future, you know. And then other thing, um, I invest in other artists. Uh, like I said, I print other work, people's work. Um, also, we collaborate with other artists in my part of the Mirabel Press. Um, it's a really great opportunity because um, first, most of the artists coming to our press, they are not printmakers. They haven't done printmaking much, so they are expertise at what they are doing. But also, you know, it's kind of collaboration. Like we share our knowledge, and they share their knowledge, and then like we work together, and then making like making new creation. You know, and then furthermore. Um, it, it's also investing in my networking, you know, like the people they know, um, they introduce us to them or, you know, we also share our inter like a networking relationship. So it's a, it's a really great opportunity that I can have here as a someone, uh, not even from here, you know. And then I have been invested in communities, um, including BookFest. I have been volunteered um, uh, as a printer for the last three years. And then also um, like Buffalo Art Studio, if they have a, like community-based events, I volunteer like maybe sometimes giving my work or coming there and make work or you know, maybe playing music with my husband <laughs> sometimes, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Um, but it's not that, you know, right? Like uh, people also invest in me. It's not all about I'm investing in other things like, you know, um, because it's like a back and forth. Like a, it, you give and I get back. Um, so MFA this is show when I was in um, graduate school, I um, had, we all had to, like a, as a part of the graduate program at UB, we all have to find a gallery um, outside of the school and then we contact them and then have a show there. And then SIPA Gallery was really generous to give me the whole floor for my thesis show. It's a lot of space. And I was really ambitious. <laughs> I was like um, covered the entire floor of the gallery with the hand printed wood block, um, covered them floor, ceiling, and walls. So because they gave me giant space, which is a great, it took so much time <laughs> and it took so much <laughs> money, of course. So that Southern Graphic Council, where I did a workshop, uh, they have a fellowship. Like I can apply for the fellowship, and I got the fellowship for my thesis show. So I, that's where the money came from because this project cost a lot of money because I had to buy paper, wood blocks, and then plus that, I also had great 
friends who were willing to help me. <laughs> Even though they were preparing their thesis show at the same time, they were happy to help me. And then I could have this great successful show when I was in graduate school. Um, because of, of this show, I took some photos and I applied for other shows. And then I've been showing this work uh, since 2017, like pretty much like from California to New York State, <laughs> yeah, over the country. Uh, it's, it's been really great um, result out after that. And then plus that, like after I graduated again, the community really helped me a lot to be able to show my work. Like, you know, like as artists, it's really important that we have that opportunity to show our work because you know you don't really get that really often. Or so, um, whenever we get that chances, we try as much as we can. Like we try to show the best result. You know we can do that. So Indigo Art Gallery, Buffalo Art Studio, uh, Birchfield Penny, they were really like generous to give me this great opportunity to show my work. And then plus El Museo right now. Um, so. Um, there are like always these like people who are investing in me, like uh, going back to the Winnipeg, um, the reason I wanna bring up again, I was helping them, of course, like just killing my time for us, and then also I wanted to do something, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with all the skills I have. And then later after I graduated, um, I, like in the meantime, I switching my visa. I had to get a job uh, to keep the visa, and then it also had to be related to what I studied. I cannot just work at a restaurant or you know other places. It has to be related to what I'm doing. And the Winnipeg was like they were they tried to help me, and then they hired me as a part time job. You know, so that was really great and then since that I tried to do anything I can do for them and then plus not only just win you back it's like it's that's how I work like people I do for them not just for you know getting something I don't really expect something coming back from me but I do that and then they knew that and then they invest in me um, so lastly I want to talk about my Buffalo family <laughs> so I came here to just get the degree and then leave the town because, um, I mean, I came with my husband, but my whole family is still live in Korea. And then my husband is not from here, he's from Boston. So um, we were like, okay, after I get done, we, we just go back to Boston or I don't know, maybe we can go back to Korea. But I got so much support, like, you know, I was always supported and then I got all this investment in me and I, like, this great community giving me so much, so I'm still here, you know? I'm, I mean, it's, I came here 2015, and then it's 2020 now. <laughs> I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't my plan, but you know, what I wanna say, because I love what I'm doing here, and also I cannot forget what the community has been giving to me, you know? This is like, I cannot even like, scale that, you know, it's, it's a priceless thing I can, you know, think about in my life. Um, before I close the talk, I really want to tell everybody, like, um, it's, it's kind of related to what I'm talking about in my artwork, because everything is really connected. Um, things doesn't happen linearly. It uh, always causes the other consequence and then brings you other, um, you know, like resort. So when I do something, I don't really rate them, like, or I don't really consider this is more important or this is less important. I just do it because it's so fun, you know. Going back to my childhood, I studied English, I painted because I liked it, you know. But I never, I didn't know. It's, it's actually I've been investing in what I'm doing right now as a teacher at, you know, uh, university, like, um, so. Like when you do something, like if you're doing something for a very specific purpose, that's a good. But sometimes what you're doing, it doesn't really come to you right now, but later it comes to you in a greater, like unexpected like gift. So um, that's how I consider the society too. Like everybody is so important. 
everybody is connected. And then there isn't such a thing like you are more important than this paper or this is more important than that. Um, so that's also what I'm trying to say in my artwork as well, um, interdependency in our society, in the system. And that's how I live right now and then who I am and where I am. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>